Okay guys, so let's talk a little bit now about nutritional, why the Dubia Roach is really, really good. It's not a perfect feeder, okay? So that's just disclaimer right there. There's no such thing truly as a perfect feeder mm -hmm. for your reptiles or amphibians or insectivores. But of the ones available out there, it is one of the better ones, you guys. And so Gio's gonna tell you about why it's one of the better ones. Yeah, we're gonna talk about five five major categories, why they're, uh, their nutritional value is, is exceptional. Uh, the first one is gonna be the moisture content. And, okay. the, and the moisture content is an important aspect of the composition of feeder insect because that kind of relates to the, your animal's ability to di digest the food, digest mm -hmm. the, those insects that they have, they eat. Uh, the dubia have about a 66% moisture content. Which is really, which is really, really good, really you guys. Good. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the next one we're going to talk about is their fat, co fat content. Mm -hmm. So basically an extremely high fat content diet is not good for your reptiles. It's not good for them, right? Yeah. So, okay. But you know, roaches are typically a well-balanced meal for, for your insectivore. Mm -hmm. uh, ro dubias range in about the 7% range of, mm -hmm. or in their fat content. Mm -hmm. So that means that you can give dubia roaches every day, you guys. So unlike wax worms or super worms, those are more like treats. And so mm -hmm. you have to, um, you know, think of dubia roaches as an everyday good a protein staple, staple source of food for your reptiles. And then you can go ahead and also um, mix it up in variety because that's really important with your mm -hmm. reptiles. Um, Dubia is one of the best ones, but that's not all you want to give. That's you want right. to put some mealworms in there and some greens. And then maybe once a week we give Tater Tot, you met him in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We give him some super worms, a few of those, like maybe every seven to 10 days. Yeah. Um, and we haven't tried a wax worm yet. We haven't tried those we yet, haven't, yeah. But we have uh, tried black soldier flies, and those are really good too, they're and great. really cool because they're high in calcium and they don't need dusting, and so that's one of the things mm -hmm. that you know you need to know that unfortunately because dubia roaches are not perfect, they do need um, the calcium that's dusting. Right. They do need to be dusted, that's for sure. Okay, so what is the third one, Geo? Well, we're going to talk about their chitin. Chitin. Okay. Some people say chitin, but it, but, chitin, but, chitin. It, but it's pretty much chitin. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Well, tell us what is chitin. Well, what chitin is, is basically a component, it's a molecule, and it's the major component in their exoskeleton. Uh, some feeders are have a high chitin content, mm -hmm. and their exoskeletons are very tough. Okay. So, like... The Halloween hissers and yeah, some and of the hissers, especially like the of... yeah, especially like the adult hissers. Those you probably don't want to feed off to like you know. Like your... we were saying earlier. Now, if there if you if you happen to run into some of the nymphs, those are probably okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely not like not the large mm -hmm. ones. Those exoskeletons okay. are super tough. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is their protein. Okay. Yeah. Let's so their protein, that. the to the protein content. Oh wait, time out. Why is is it called chitin? Chitin. chitin. What, if too much chitin, what can cause, what can happen in your animal? Well, the impaction. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so they can get impacted. I think we mentioned that a little bit earlier, but that's basically an uh, obstruction in their uh, digestion. Digestive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that can, you know, if not found out really pretty quickly and addressed pretty quickly, um, it can it can make your beardy so sick or your your animal very sick and they probably need to go to a vet pretty quickly yeah. so that it doesn't turn fatal. So yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. So dubia roaches have are lower in that because mm -hmm. they're real soft and that's why they're one of the better source feeders that's for right. for reptiles. Okay, so about protein. Protein. So protein. The dubia range in about the twenty two percent range in, in protein. Uh, Compared to let's say a cricket, which is like more like fifteen percent. So their so protein. So twenty-two versus fifteen. Yeah. So you can hmm. see that their their protein content is is pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, their uh, calcium to for phosphorus ratio. Mm. So what calcium is mm -hmm. is four. Calcium mm -hmm. is the one of the most important nutrients for mm -hmm. reptiles. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes their bones strong, and. Yeah, and then, and they also need vitamin D three to help metabolize yeah. the fats and the proteins. Uh, mm -hmm. So oftentimes you will hear about the calcium to phosphorus ratio, uh, the ideal ratio being about a two to one ratio. Mm. Uh, now the dubias are one to one and a half. So as you can see, 
they're not they're not they're not, not perfect, perfect. Not, not perfect. perfect and that's the reason why they have to be dusted because right. they lack they lack mm -hmm. that, that calcium they like that but with dusting they're very good that's right, right? they're very good they sure are <laughs> so we just talked about all the great attributes about the dubia roach mm -hmm. uh, and but we also want you to consider a few things. We want you to consider that the dubia roach is not a perfect feeder, like as we mentioned earlier. Right, we mentioned that a lot already. Yeah, and we recommend that you that you offer your insectivore, your reptile, mm -hmm. or whatever your pet is, a wide range of different foods. A wide variety. A wide variety, mm -hmm. you know, so you want to, you know, you don't want to just stick to one thing and one thing only. Some people mm -hmm. just stick to, let's say crickets and feed them crickets. You know, you want to you wanna change it up mm -hmm. with them. There are, you have to be careful and really pay attention at, that's the nutritional value of every insect. There's some insects like, like you mentioned mm -hmm. that you can't just give that, give that to them every, every day. Every day, like yeah. the wax worms and the, uh, the, super the worm. super worms. Right. So just to give you guys a little example of what we feed Tater Tot. Mm -hmm. Tater Tot is nine months old and so he's still considered, of course, until they're one years old, a juvenile bearded dragon. So if any of you guys have under one years old, they should have about 15 to 20 insects a day. And they should really, even, even if they're younger, like four, five, up to six months, they should actually be fed three t up to three times a day, different times in the day. I feed tater tot at nine months, an AM feeding and a PM feeding, mm -hmm. but not before bed or when the lights would go off. But I feed him about 10 bugs in the morning and 10 bugs in the late afternoon. And I'll might of the 10, maybe give them five dubia and then five millworms. And then the same thing at night, or if it's time for maybe it's been a week or so and I haven't given him any super worms, then I might go ahead and swap a few of those for the millworms or for the dubia. And of course you always wanna give collard greens, mustard Definitely. greens, those kind of greens. He likes carrots. He loves carrots, yeah. Um, he's a big fan of that. Um, you can also give things like raspberries and blueberries, but I would even do those um, fruit type of things very sparingly because I noticed that it gives them kind of runny stools, so, mm -hmm. which is not fun to clean up. Yes. So, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, they need a, a wide variety and I even dust um, the calcium throughout his um, green, green leafy vegetables and, mm -hmm. and and the bugs and i even put all the bugs on top of his green leafy so when he's trying to get some of the bugs he also gets some greens in his mouth or carrots and oh, stuff like that tricky i'm smart Mom. yeah yeah and then uh so another thing that you want to consider uh before you're breeding these guys is uh you allergies some people are very mm -hmm. allergic to them uh now we luckily have not I haven't had any we too haven't, bad reaction. Yeah, to we the haven't press. had a reaction, right? So, yeah. but but some people they're they're kind of they have a reputation for causing some allergies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you before be careful before handling, you might have to wear gloves. Yeah. Uh, or, and know, a mask. A mask. Uh huh. Uh, like then, even an N95 mask, if you are a person that has really bad allergies from the get go, that you don't want to inhale the frazz, which is their poop. Their poop, yeah. It's yeah, dusty. Dusty and. And it has that smell anyways. Um, but yeah, if you're a person, you don't really want to be inhaling that. An N95 mask tends to work better than a regular yeah. um, blue mask that we were all wearing during COVID times and all that. Yeah, and, and one, one thing important is to keep their colonies clean. Mm -hmm. If you put fresh food, we like to, uh, once we put fresh vegetables and fruits, we like to clean it up. Uh, we give them enough for that day. We don't let stuff just sit in their bins for days mm -hmm. and days because that, that grows that grows mold. mold yeah. And then it, you know, then you start attracting fruit flies. And it stinks. So you know, even though they are a roach, mm -hmm. uh, we still like to keep their habitat clean. Uh, mm -hmm. We like to keep their stuff clean, and that might help out with all that allergic reactions that mm -hmm. just, some people would have. And we sort our um, colonies at the beginning of each month, and so that's when we really try to clean out all that junk. We leave a little tiny bit of frass maybe behind for the little baby nymphs because they like to hide in there and mm -hmm. eat eat that actually. Yeah. But we try to clear out most of it because we want to keep these roaches living in a very hygienic yeah. and also keep us from having developments in the future of any allergies. That's right. So the last thing we want to talk about is their legality. Okay. And you know, if you if you live out in Florida uh, in Hawaii oh, okay. or Canada, mm -hmm. uh, you, these guys are illegal. 
So Dubia, sure. Dubia, are Dubia illegal. roaches. Okay. Dubia roaches are illegal in, in Florida, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and Canada. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you you know you don't want to get caught smuggling these guys because you will get a fine. Mm. Now, in Florida, what is legal is our discoid roaches. Right, and discoid. Discoid roaches, and it's, we are raising those right now, and mm -hmm. you know we will let you know when those are available on our website. And ladies, the discoid roaches are so cute. Not when they're adults, <laughs> not when they're adults. I'm still scared of the adults, but the babies are very interesting. They have an interesting little pattern on them, don't they? They got little little speckles on them. Yeah, they're like, they're very interesting. I call them checkered pattern, but anyways, um, yeah. So if you're in Florida and you, we know that in Florida, our Floridian friends and neighbors, we know that you guys struggle and you have hard times sometimes finding feeder roach feeders for your for your reptiles over there since you cannot have uh, Dubia and you're looking for discoid make sure you do check out our website because like I said and mentioned that we are breeding those currently and we should have some available pretty soon so there is a subscribe uh, to our like an email subscription mm -hmm. that you can get reach emails or you can reach out to us on our email and you can let us know hey we really need some of those because they are they can be kind of hard to find oh, yeah, this for point. Sure, yeah. um, and that's kind of a desperation feeling um, if you don't have food for your reptiles that's and right. stuff so anything else you wanted to say before we were gonna wrap up this video I, I mean I think we covered a lot of things you know we appreciate mm -hmm. you guys watching uh, mm -hmm. I hope that you would subscribe to our channel yes we would do be doing a lot of these videos in the future we'll be doing a comparison of dubia discoid to kind of show their yeah, nutritional the, values side by side like the differences pound. okay yeah, very so, cool so we'll be doing that soon also we're going to be doing um a video on our millworms and our colony and how we're setting up our colony how we've done that mm -hmm. how we are breeding those right and so if you have an interest in those and maybe purchasing some for feeders or maybe for your own breeding colony. Right. You might want to look out for that. One of my most favorite videos though that we've done recently since you know we've began this channel in the beginning of the year is when we went to the Conroe oh, yeah, that was fun. Reptile Show and that was really a lot of fun and we have, I'll go ahead and link it for you up here. That way you can just click on that um, and go check out those reptiles. They're really cool. A lot of chameleons. Um, and what's really cool about that video that a lot of our uh, subscribers have mentioned is that we didn't just concentrate on just the snakes. Yeah, you know, yeah. We really did a good job of just covering you know, all, all mm -hmm. the different lizards and even they even had some... Turtles, tortoises, of, oh, yeah. frogs, Pac-Man frogs. And we did a lot of interviews because I'm a big time... Uh, I like to just learn. I love to get ed educated. Mm -hmm. And so I really, really love talking that we were talking to all the vendors yeah. and we gave the vendors information. So if you guys really can appreciate something like that, I'll link it for you up here. Just go ahead and check that out. It's called the Conroe Reptile Show. Yeah, we thank you guys. We thank you so much. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're Michelle and Gio, and we'll see you guys next time. See you guys. Bye-bye for today.